it's beginning to look a lot like the sun's shine. Have you ever noticed how sometimes people, when they talk about God, they have a kind of a sugar daddy, sugar coating, syrupy way of talking and sharing and relating? I don't know what kind of God they've got. But for me, my father is always with me, but he chastises me sometimes. <laughs> Maybe you feel the same way too. There are mornings where it's overcast and Maybe your emotions go boom, and you think that, oh no, where's God? Well, God hasn't gone anywhere. <laughs> but you might be experiencing something that is good for you in the sense of, it might not be that sugar daddy kind of syrupy, you know, pour the syrup all over the pancakes to make them taste better. <laughs> but, uh, The reality of your life might be there are things where God is so real or you desperately need him that he becomes for you just the breath that you need to just labor for one more breath. <sighs> you know, Jesus did that when he was on the cross. He had to <sighs> work at taking every breath because it was a struggle. He is body had worn down to where he was suffocating as he was on the cross. We all know that life is not a bowl of cherries and you don't get to, you know, kind of like just eat, well, cherries without the pits. <laughs> you don't get to be a sugar daddy Christian, you know, where everything is going to come to you in oh so sweetness and light. But rather, God is going to take you through this world of tribulation, through this world of frustration and aggravations, through this place that is not your home, in order to bring you to a place that is your home. Because you were never designed for this. This is all corruption. I mean, even the world at its best, which might inspire you, is really, dare I say, at its worst, because Frankly, the God of this world is kind of like taking it and mixed it all up so you don't recognize really what God's creation is all about. I mean, when you even look at mountains, you know, you go, oh, how majestic, you know, and how these, how wonderful these things are. And yet we realize that they are forces that are caused to upthrust and to downthrust and you're pushing and shoving and causing earthquakes and manipulations of the crust of the earth, you know, to be shoved this way and shoved that way and shoved up and down and forced down sometimes. It doesn't sound very peaceful. <laughs> but that's how the world is right now, you know, and that's how people are. They're kind of like shoved up and shoved down and shoved here and shoved there, and kind of like going through all their gyrations, kind of like politics. <laughs> Or whatever you're into, sports. <laughs> Who knows? Family, friends, relationships. But God is not like that. You see, God is constant. And one of the things we can do is find in Him, as we flee from this, and even our own bodies at times, it betrays us by the weakness that there is in it, whether it be old age or the cold weather or the times and seasons of life that you go through, we can always flee to our Father and find love and find comfort, to find tenderness, to find gentleness, because He loves us because of what His Son has done. Because Jesus suffered what it was like to be without the Father. He didn't like it. <laughs> Matter of fact, He didn't like it so much, He was willing to die to bring you back to a place of knowing God our Father in a personal way. He was willing to say, look, you guys don't get it. There's so much more happening here where I'm at that I want you to be with me so that when I go back to be with my Father, you can be with me always throughout eternity. And a love like that 
changes us. It makes us able to endure sometimes the, as you see this off to your left, camera wise, the kind of like the dryness of this tree that is kind of, you can't see it all, but it died back. It got burned. It's kind of like struggling to survive. But there's more to life than that because the life of the tree still goes on. It's still reaching up and outward and trying to grow and to express itself to the Creator that created it. Likewise, so too with you in your day. You are going through something today. You know it and I know it. But more than that, God recognizes it and allows for it to be used for His purposes to bring you to a place of knowing Him in a more personal and intimate way, even if it means pain. So, while there are a lot of sugar daddies out there that are promising all this sweetness and light, don't be afraid of the darkness and the might of God when He comes into your life and allows certain things to happen for His design and purpose. Because in the end, <laughs> we win. No. <laughs> but in the meantime, He'll be with you in your sufferings. You know your suffering. And sometimes so am I. But you know, Sometimes that's a good thing. And in those times, just lay back, turn to God, give it to Him, and just experience it for what it is meant to be. Don't let feelings rule. This is my comfort and consolation in my affliction, that your word has revived me and given me life. From Psalm 119.50 God showed me that we are always going to have feelings. Gee. <laughs> and that denying the existence of them is not godly. You mean we don't have to always be go, go, yeah, yeah, oh, I rejoice? <laughs> we do have to learn how to manage them, though, so they don't manage us. If we live by our feelings, we will be destroyed, because our feelings aren't always in line with God's truth. We are to walk by faith in His promises and not by sight or how things appear, or the way we feel about them. See 2 Corinthians 5, 7. Ask God to keep your feelings balanced with the truth of his word today. And whatever it is that God is taking you through, let him lead the way. And then try to bring your emotions into the devotion you have for God. Because it's easy to get caught up by our feelings and let them fail the test of faith that we might be going through. But rather, even when we're in despair, we can recognize that God is there. Even when we're discouraged, we can know that His Spirit is with us. Even when we're down and out and feeling as though we're all alone, <laughs> we can know that Jesus is right there, standing behind us, just slightly out of sight, slightly out of focus. But He's there, always, because He promised. So because he promised, your faith can sometimes take your emotion and turn it inside out so that it becomes the fruit of the Spirit crushed so that you could savor what God has done in your life because you've experienced already his deliverance in times past. So you know your future is assured. So though you may suffer in the present time for but a season, You'll get through it. <laughs> you really will. Honestly, I know. We've all been there. And we all may go there. For everything there is a time and a season. And a purpose under heaven. A time to be born. A time to die. A time to rejoice. A time to laugh. But a time to cry. And a time to suffer. So whatever it is that you're going through. Whatever it is that is hard for you. Turn turn, turn, like the song says, but turn to Jesus and just let him know. And then maybe if you listen and wait, maybe he'll let you know that he loves you.